We have here two of our guests from the Environment Agency from the uh, United Kingdom. It's Stuart Sampson. Uh, you're working at the Environment Agency. And I learned from the internet that in 2017, you from the UK asked for more rain in the winter. You must have made a lot of friends. Yes. <laughs> uh, but you will tell us more about that. Uh, uh, and with you, you have your uh, 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 colleague, which is Victoria Williams. Uh, she also uh, works in the Environment uh, Agency. Um, you are water resources advisor, uh, and I hope you had the translation really well because you are the one that are uh, helping us, helping you uh, uh, to, to keep the balance between uh, draft and uh, uh, too much water. Uh, so we are, uh, yesterday you were in the wear of uh, Amerongen, um, and we, especially for you, we put there a lot of water so you can, uh, you can see it in all kinds of states. And probably we've got uh, drone views of uh, last year, so yes, you can yeah. see the big difference. Uh, we are really uh, looking forward to your uh, uh, speech of managing too much and too little water in England. And we didn't knew that you had too little water in England. <laughs> okay, the floor is yours. There Thank you. So thank you, first of all, for inviting us both here. Uh, I expect you've uh, certainly had quite a few of our colleagues who have had uh, been on the flood side, so too much water. Uh, both of myself and Victoria uh, do the opposite extreme, so too little water. Uh, so today uh, I'm going to run through uh, about how we manage water in England. Uh, there will be a focus on how, you know, sort of on... The, the too little, so our drought policies, what our priorities are. Look at, sort of delve into sort of the drought history as well. And uh, something which we found out yesterday, actually, uh, when, you, when I put up the slide later of actually some of the droughts which uh, happened in England, um, actually, you, hopefully, you'll notice actually quite a few of the times, you yourselves have, have also had that. And it shows that weather pattern, uh, which uh, for us... Uh, you know, sort of, we will get uh, a certain weather pattern, and often, uh, certainly, the whole of Northern Europe will actually get a very similar uh, uh, pattern. Um, I'll run through the, some of the impacts and why we're trying to reduce the risk of drought. Uh, some, what, and then uh, we're also looking at the, the response, and finally, some of the long term uh, planning which we're doing, which we're trying to, to, uh, to mitigate uh, these periods. Um, so we do face uh, extremes, and here is just you know. And again, we heard from from yourselves, you know, sort of in 2018, you sort of faced something quite similar in the sense of uh, you had too much at the start of the year, and then too little uh, through. And for us, there's different parts of the country have <coughs> different responses, and this is up in the northwest of England, uh, naturally quite a wet area. Uh, so in November 2009, as you can see on, on the left, too much. Uh, and certainly lots of flooding, lots of issues. Uh, but then just, you know, by July 2010, we were back into too little. So rivers having dried up and also strategic reservoirs, uh, which yeah, supply drinking water, also down to a very low level. So, for us, water is very important. Um, we are, for the Environment Agency, we're there trying to protect our, our pristine uh, rivers, uh, making sure the wildlife uh, is supported. But at the same stage, we also have to do a sort of a balancing act, which is uh, there's demand for water from the power sector, uh, also from farming, uh, but also for, for drinking water as well. And uh, we manage this by, uh, we put out uh, abstraction licenses. So we have a licensing system, which means that for people who want to take any water out of uh, rivers or groundwater, they have to apply to us uh, for, for a license to it. We will make an assessment, to see if there's enough water for them to, to take it. And of all the water which comes out, uh, out of groundwater and rivers and lakes, 
The majority is used uh, effectively for our water supply to households and businesses. And that's done through uh, our water company network. Um, that makes up the, the most of it. Um, the other sectors, electricity uh, and industry, other big demands. Um, farming, which you probably quite, might be uh, quite surprised, only a very small percentage, just 1%. But actually, that's concentrated uh, in, in the summertime. So, uh, you know, this is for the, the total through the year. But if we then break that down into a summer, that percentage does, uh, does increase. <coughs> so one question we often get, and as you've alluded, doesn't it always rain in England? And certainly, uh, on average, um, it does feel it does rain quite a bit. And uh, you can certainly see from the, uh, you know, but we do have a really, you know, sort of uh, gradient uh, of rain. So it, certainly in the west, uh, you know, so we can see some really high rainfall totals. Uh, but as we go to the east, uh, actually, that's starting to get actually quite dry. Uh, and it, I think it surprises quite a few people. But also our population is centred well, actually in the southeast. So where we don't, you know, sort of, we have less water available. Uh, actually, we're putting all the people there. So uh, again, that also brings uh, some issues. So looking at uh, sort of a long term, we face very similar uh, uh, challenges to, to managing water resources. You know, there are some some differences, but um, overall, we've got population growth. We're trying to protect our environment. So lots of our streams and lakes and rivers, uh, you know, sort of we want to make sure that's protected. But then, and I won't say it too loudly, but there is the climate change aspect as well. Uh, but <laughs> I think we, we've certainly, the previous speaker has uh, uh, dealt with that one. Um, looking at droughts, so we do get droughts. And so despite all, you know, high levels of rainfall, uh, at times, actually, you know, sort of, we do end up uh, with quite severe droughts, and these are just some um, just picked out. And as you can see, so 1996 for us, actually, in the north was was actually very very dry, but some national ones, you know, 1976, so very similar to yourselves, you know, a very major uh, drought uh, across the whole of uh, of England. Often it's, uh, you know, sort of related to the pressure systems coming through, high pressure, often sitting sort of uh, across northern Europe, will we'll sometimes, you know, will dominate our weather. Um, and as a result, you know, droughts happen. Um, so how are we preparing for it? So, uh, so um, certainly we have a, a national register, uh, which shows, you know, sort of, actually all the the potential risks which we might face. Drought is included in the the severe weather category. Um, we do have flooding, which you know, sort of, is also on this risk, risk register. But it means that we now need to be prepared, take action for this, and actually plan to reduce the risk uh, and impacts of drought. So the priorities for drought management, and this is something which we discussed yesterday, and certainly something which we'll be taking back to, to England, is actually the way you've already uh, put into legislation some of your priorities. Um, and this is actually, you know, sort of, we're just developing uh, this. And it's, um, you know, and you will see, you know, quite a, a lot of similarities to, to your own uh, priorities. So, quickly through some of the historic droughts. Uh, obviously, you will see, you know, you probably see quite a few very similar ones. But some of the pictures here just, you know, sort of uh, going back to the, you know, the 30s, you know, quite a severe drought, so the picture in the, the top left. Um, but actually, some of our big reservoirs in the north of England, um, you know, in 1996 were, were basically so low. And, and that drought actually has defined how we've managed water uh, since uh, 96 because things got so uh, critical. And when you've got a reservoir of that size and there's just a little small puddle of water left in it, you know something is certainly wrong. 
So what are we trying to avoid? Um, effectively, our biggest user is, is for drinking water. And back in 1976, standpipes were put out uh, across, uh, across England. And um, where well, it might work, you know, might have been an effective tool back in 1976, I don't think that we could see things like this happening uh, today. And certainly, if you, you sort of thought of this in, you know, in the city of London and saying to people, go and collect your water by a bucket, I really don't think uh, that would go down too well. Um, so our response to, to drought, we've, we've categorised, you know, in very simplicity here, but we have several categories of, uh, of drought. Going from basically our normal status into that severe drought, and the severe drought is where we want to try and avoid. Uh, that is, you know, sort of where we're talking about standpipes or it's, you know, some sort of water rationing. Uh, and that is exactly where we don't want to be. However, we need to be prepared. We've looked at, um, uh, uh, you know, sort of time scales. You know, sort of for us, um, you know, 24 months, and we could get into that severe, um, severe point with, with drought. Could be a lot longer as well. Um, but we've started on that preparation. We've identified what we might do, some of the mitigation measures, some of the, the changes uh, which we need to do. Um, here is the responsibility. So certainly, in you know, sort of as we move from a normal status into the early signs of drought, this is where the environment agency and water companies, the private water companies in England, we take the lead on on this work. But as we move through and as we're heading towards that severe drought um, part, this is where government will eventually uh, step in. Now, given What's happening at the moment with government? You might you might wonder if that's the the uh, the best solution. Uh, finally, uh, certainly for me is uh, so we're trying to avoid that you know that severe drought. And one of the key to this is our long-term planning. Uh, so water companies and ourselves have a statutory duty to plan uh, our water supplies for the next 25 years, making sure that actually. People, when you turn the taps on, water will continue so that uh, we can ensure that the most sustainable ways of supplying water actually are put through. Some of this it can be managing our demand, so looking at leakage, looking at uh, trying to cut people's uh, use, encourage them to be uh, efficient with their uh, use of water. But also other things are, uh, will be supply, so uh, new reservoirs, um, uh, you know, storage of water, desalination plants, which obviously are energy intensive, but again, with new technology, more energy efficiency could be a way forward. Um, finally, improving the infrastructure, making sure things like leakage are, you know, sort of not happening. So again, here, uh, the residents of London, very happy to see their roads dug up and causing all manner of uh, traffic problems. Um, but certainly for me, uh, thank you very much, and I'll pass over to um, Victoria. Thank you. How do you move it? Is it the right one? Yes. Hello, welcome. And uh, I'm uh, Victoria Williams. I'm Senior Advisor in Water Resources in Stuart's team. I'm going to take you through um, the... Uh, the observations um, from England, or otherwise known now as uh, Brexit land, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, over 2008, and it's it's not a short story. There's quite a lot to it, so I'll I'll get you through it. So this is our um, colleagues in the Met Office. These are their maps, and this shows that the picture. Um, from Jan uh, June to August 2018. So we've got our mean temperature anom an anomaly map and we've got our rainfall amounts map. And you can see there were some um, anomalies of uh, increase of two degrees and that obviously was over the majority of England. Um, we also had um, some very low rainfall and uh, some of those deficits were down to actually 30% less than long-term average. Uh, in parts as well, mainly around the Midlands uh, and heading down towards the southeast. So that was the picture from the summer. In terms of our hydrology network, um, we're very lucky in the Environment Agency to have over 2,000 
rivers uh, that are uh, monitored, uh, 2,000 monitoring sites on our rivers. Uh, this is a selection of our national monitoring sites that are used in our national network and our reporting systems. And we also have 4,000 groundwater monitoring site um, boreholes as well. And again, this is our national uh, monitoring network that we use to, to uh, maintain the picture uh, nationally. You can see at the end of August, at the end of our summer, we had a number of our rivers that were in uh, low levels, um, red being the lowest level, exceptionally low. And we also had um, a, a couple of our groundwater boreholes, particularly in the chalk in the southeast of England, so this, uh, let me just find the pointer, uh, that one around here, uh, where they had been low, and I'll explain why that was important uh, in the next slide. Um, in terms of comparisons of uh, our, our uh, dry weather in 2018 um, to previous drought years that uh, Stuart talked about, you can see that, again, 2018 is an outlier up here. So this is obviously a, a plot of our summer mean temperature against our summer rainfall totals for the period June to, to August. Um, 2018, it was actually warmer, um, only very slightly, marginally, um, than 1976, which was our um, worst drought year. Um, but obviously, it's slightly um, slightly wetter, less dry um, than 1976, but we're not far away. It's still an outlier, and uh, you can see that our water resource management system has helped us to manage our water resources better to this combination of hot, dry weather. Um, I wanted to bring you um, back a bit from um, 2018 and a step back in time to October 2016, and this is really important because we have actually been responding to prolonged dry weather since uh, the winter of 2016-17, um, so where we had a very, very low winter of rainfall, um, which obviously is important for our groundwaters and getting that recharge, which is actually quite a, a um, dominant uh, public water supply source, especially in the southeast. Um, so we... we we had a low winter rainfall, um, so we were already looking and uh, monitoring for um, dry weather through that summer of 2017. Uh, luckily, it was a little bit wetter, and you can see some spikes in, um, in, in, in uh, rainfall over the summer months, uh, which helped contain any situation that year. But then we had another um, low rainfall period between November and December 2017, uh, which put us on the front foot for, um, for uh, 2018, and obviously that's the summer that was 2018, which meant that basically we entered um, the, uh, the year of January 2018 with already a number of our areas, and these are our area operational boundaries in the Environment Agency, um, at a dry uh, weather response mode already, so our incident rooms were, were working, our um, water resources colleagues at operation, in the operations areas were already responding to the impact. So we were already scaled up, uh, as you might say, for flood, flood um, but that was back in January 2018. This was the position by August 2018. This was, there was only two areas that essentially weren't at incident mode of some kind. So obviously it was affecting the whole of England. So you're probably interested to know what were those impacts. Um, this is, sorry about the word, there's a lot of words on this slide, but um, basically we, we um, split up um, drought impacts into three, really, uh, three distinct categories. So you've got public water supply, um, and we've also got agriculture impacts, and I'll come on to the next slide about the environmental impacts. In terms of public water supply, most of those were felt most severely in um, this area, which is Cumbria, and you might be familiar with Cumbria being actually quite a prone flooding area. It's steep-sided, it reacts really quickly to periods of high rainfall and low rainfall. Um, so the, ro lo the, the really um, low rainfall in uh, May and June and the heat wave did actually cause some record peak demands. And actually, record peak demands for, for many water companies um, across England. And, and that was mainly as a result in, in England. We enjoy our, our summers, but we enjoy them even more if they're hot. And the paddling pools come out. And uh, last year, a lot of um, 
temporary um, inflatable hot tubs came out. So that's a new demand phenomenon that we need to plan for. Um, so there was peaks of uh, over 20% above their normal planning uh, demand scenarios for the water companies. That caused localised supply problems, not necessarily from um, the raw water, but actually the distribution network for the water companies and getting that water into, into the systems um, for the, the, the demands that were coming on from the taps. Um, we also, um, probably worth noting here, um, had some obviously dry soils and the water companies reported um, burst pipes and increased leakage because of the subsidence on the, 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 um, the uh, soils causing uh, breaks in, the, in their pipelines. It wasn't a huge problem, but it was reported. In terms of how the water companies responded to that, um, there was customer restrictions planned in the northwest of England. Um, they didn't happen in the end. Luckily, this is usually the case, especially for the northwest. The rain did come in time before those customer restrictions were put on. Uh, they had some campaigns. They had um, adverts on the television. We had um, radio press campaigns that were led by the water companies. Um, but also, uh, I don't think this um, is a legislation that is in the Netherlands, but um, water companies are allowed during periods of drought to apply for a drought permit, which is basically a temporary relaxation of their license, their water resource license, to be able to them to take more water for a temporary period. Um, so we granted five drought permits for the water company operating in the northwest. Um, they weren't actually used in the, in the end again because those rains did come in time. And also for the first time since 1976, um, we actually did apply ourselves for a drought order for environmental reasons, which was basically to maintain supplies in a compensation reservoir, which is a reservoir not used for public water supply, but is for environmental benefit to make sure that the water could be sustained in that reservoir. So, um, yeah, that was um, one thing that yeah, was unusual in our normal drought management activity. In terms of agriculture, I think very similar issues to yourself. Grass growth and fodder quality was affected. We had some reports of interruptions to, to livestock and domestic water supplies on farms, which did cause some problems, and the water companies bowsered water in, tankered water in to support that. And obviously, crop yields were down as well. The Environment Agency um, supported farmers. There was an agricultural drought summit um, with our ministers from our Department of Environment plus the Environment Agency and the National Farmers Union. And we allowed some very temporary, flexible um, arrangements to be put in place. We received 130 applications and we allowed 90 of those, uh, obviously trying to maintain environmental standards where we could. Um, and then environmental impacts, most of these were temporary, but you can see that we had some big spikes uh, compared to previous years in terms of our environmental, um, our, our reports of incidents that were related to dry weather, and that might include reports of water quality issues like algal growth, um, fish kills because of low dissolved oxygen levels, and also Ill illegal abstraction where people are taking water and they haven't got a license to do so. So yeah, that was a big spike. But that was temporary. And uh, I guess the same thing um, happened here is that we still don't have the, the evidence of any permanent damage to the environment at, the, at this time. Um, in, in terms of our actions, this is just a flavour of some of them, and these were happening all over the country, and some pictures here show that we were, we were doing our monitoring, uh, doing more of our monitoring. We were rescuing fish where it was needed to be, where fish were needed to be rescued from a, from a stranded pool of water and moved to, to somewhere else. We were also um, checking our licenses, well, the licenses of our customers to make sure they were complying with those. And um, probably interesting for the Netherlands, we have some reg um, river regulation systems on our River Seven and River Thames. Those were operating. And uh, one thing I haven't put on here, but also we had an asset inspection program as well at the end of the summer. And we went out and our, um, our flood... <laughs> Um, teams went out and checked the integrity of our flood defences and assets as well, which actually there was, um, there was very limited damage to those, unlike um, the Level Netherlands, but I think that's the difference in the clay soils and, and, and not so the many clay soils in, in England. <coughs> um, and, yeah, I think Harold mentioned earlier, 
comms, communications is really, really important um, for drought. And it's those early co communications to make sure that we reassure the public, reassure our stakehold stakeholders and reassure government that we're on top of this, we're working hard, we're working together with all those stakeholders. And these are just a few messages that we used in our communications. My favourite is the bottom one, we are alert but not alarmed. So keeping everything just nicely um, managed. And uh, if anyone's familiar, that's Pete Fox, our Water, Land and Biodiversity um, director who um, did some um, media interviews on, on, on the BBC. And then finally, what does 2019 hold? Well, like I say, we've been at a watch brief of dry weather since 2016, so we are moving into our fourth year of um, being at some kind of watching brief or incident mode for, for low rainfall and low water resources. Um, we've still got this low uh, groundwater picture all over the country now, more than we had at the start of last year. So it's going to be a watching brief, and particularly for this area uh, where we, the, the rainfall that we have had so far this year has kind of stopped here, and we've still got a very... Um, low rainfall deficit in the East Anglia part of uh, the UK. So it's, um, yeah, no, no rest for the wicked. We're not out of the woods yet, some of the phrases that we <laughs> use <laughs> we use in England. So uh, with that, I'd just like to say... Um, oh, I've forgotten <laughs> it. Thank you, Val. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go.